At this stage, I can row and average a 1 minute 45 per 500 meter split. Ah, maybe I've picked the wrong person for this week's Form Check Friday. That row, clearly pretty tricky for me to run hard immediately off the back of. No, no, this is the right one. This week, I'm taking a look at YouTube sensation Mark Lewis. If you already know who he is, you'll know how inspirational and entertaining his channel is. If you don't, then this video will still help you, but I do recommend checking out his channel after you watch this video. And of course, many thanks to Mark for not telling me to sod off when I asked if I could jump on his bandwagon. Now, Mark isn't a rower, but he's someone that loves fitness and loves pushing himself with new experiences, like trying to cycle as fast as Bradley Wiggins. One challenge was, as a non-rower, trying to row as fast as Olympian Steve Redgrave. The video for this is very entertaining, and his progress and technique was huge, helped out by Cameron Buchan, whose big headline change to an initial row was that he was over-compressing at the front of the stroke and missing leg power. You can see the rounding of his back here, with tailbone tucked underneath him as he tries to get more length by curling up, instead of tilting over his hips with a more powerful posture. His knees are way past vertical, creating the overcompression that Cameron mentioned, which, when coupled with how high his heels come off the footplates, means he totally misses the connection of power from his legs. Moving to his actual row attempt, although he addresses the rounding of his back as he came into the catch, the knees were still past vertical and the posture was still a backwards one, exaggerating the early backswing that will have lost him a lot of power through his row. Now before I leave this stage of his rowing, one thing I'd like to point out is his grip versus Cameron's grip. Mark has a real death choke on the handle here, versus Cameron's relaxed hands with fingers hooked over the handle. Choking down on the handle creates real tension through the body, fighting against the power from his legs. It loses a few centimetres of potential stroke length compared to a hooked grip, and it'll exhaust the forearms from all the tension. All this said, in the end, by just addressing the overcompression of his back, he managed to get a speed increase, taking his 2k from an already impressive 6 minutes 30 seconds down to 6.24, with a finish that many of us will recognise. Now though, Mark uses his rowing skills within High Rocks competitions. This is the rowing stage of his second competition. He's still got that death grip on the handle, and he's still over-compressing into the front, knees going past vertical, which will overstress the legs coming forwards and causes him to miss the leg drive. This is then compounded by the fact he swings his back out from a forwards tilt way before the back and legs connect to the stroke, still missing out on a huge amount of power that could be going into his stroke. He's pretty much half slide before his arms even connect to the handle, meaning all of his power is coming from his quite considerable upper body. And then his recovery, feet yanking on the foot straps to pull himself forwards, bending the knees early, throwing the handle up and over them. All of this is using energy from his quads, his shins and his core that just don't need to be in play at this part of the stroke. Now, I know that this is a video about Mark, but let's quickly take a look at the guy next to him. Where Mark's issue is that he misses the connection of his back, this guy is totally missing the connection of his legs. Watch as he comes forward, so hands come forwards. His backside somehow moves back, even before his arms are finished. So look, his arms are still coming forwards, his backside's moving backwards. And then he gets to there, where are we? There. And that's the point when his arms finally connect to the machine. So all of this leg drive here has been missed. None of that's gone into the machine at all. It's all been about what's quite a considerable backswing and arm pull into the machine. But this butt scoot is losing him so much power. All of that leg drive there. This is possibly the biggest example of a butt scoot that I've ever seen in the wild. 
Skipping forwards in time, this is a video that Mark has released in August 2022. And not much has changed. I'd say in fact, compared to previous rows, initial problems are being compounded. The overcompression is still there. The death grip on the handle is still there and the back that doesn't want to add in any power to the stroke is still there. And this time, it's really clear that Mark has gone back into a rowing style that's all about pulling from the front. The early arm bend taking over the power duties from the legs. Look again at when he connects to the stroke. It's so late that his power is all upper body arm pull, which admittedly when you have an upper body that big is a lot of power. At this stage, I can row an average a one minute 45 per 500 meter split. But it's just gonna wipe you out quicker. That row clearly pretty tricky for me to run hard immediately off the back of. Your legs and back are designed to be workhorses going hard and long. Your upper body, not so much. So shifting the effort for his 1K into his upper body will massively contribute to this fatigue. Look at his arms as he runs after the row. He can hardly move them as he's just destroyed them in the row. People often moan that I wave my arms around too much in these videos. Well, not today because I still can't feel them. And with the farmer's carry coming up after this run, he's in for a world of hurt that he just doesn't need to be in. However, I do accept that a lot of high rocks athletes use their upper body during the row purposefully, saving the legs for the next runs to come, and just using the upper body as a rest. So, in this video, is Mark happy with the fact he can get a good pace from his row using just his upper body? It doesn't matter that it's going to tire him quicker, as long as it's fast and he can then save his legs for the next run. If you're a high rocks athlete, let me know in the comments whether this is your approach. The thing is, if Mark is rowing a 3 minute 30 1k, he doesn't need to row any quicker. Knocking just 10 seconds off that time will take a huge toll on his body for very little reward. What I'm banging on about is that he may want to consider the fatigued state he is left in right now and to try to address that. And he could reduce that fatigue by letting his legs and back get in on the action and share some of the work. It's been the same story from the start for Mark's rowing, but as I showed in this video, the power that can be created by swinging your back from a forward tilt to a backward tilt is something that you just don't want to ignore. I'm not saying that he has to push any harder with his legs, all I'm saying is that he should be a little bit more efficient with how he pushes his legs into the machine and connects it to the rest of his body in order to give him a more efficient stroke, okay? So what that means is that right now, as Mark comes forwards, his posture has this tailbone tucked underneath him, and then he comes racing into the front, knees go right past over his ankles, so he's at the wrong angle in the front to get that power into the machine. His heels are coming up a little bit, which is fine, as long as you get them down for the drive instantly, okay? Don't be lost by this idea of heels should never come up off the foot plates. They can come up as long as they don't contribute to the butt scoot that we saw in the other guy earlier in the video, or they don't cause problems with that leg connection because you're so late, okay? So um, don't worry about heels. Anyway, back to this. So he's coming forwards, knees are right past ankles, and he's got his posture tucked underneath him, okay? And losing loads of power. What I'm suggesting is that he comes forwards, shins are in a vertical position. Like I say, heels can come up a tiny bit. That's absolutely fine. Shins are vertical. Posture-wise, he's power, more powerful, okay? He's not tucked up under like this, taking it all through his lower back. He has a more powerful posture, okay? And then instantly, the, the length I can get, I increase length just by sitting up and allowing my body to tilt in towards the front of the machine. Then, push the legs into the machine. The handle instantly connects to the flywheel because of the body position you're in. That leg drive happens with straight arms. You've still got your forward lean. Once your legs are round right about halfway done, that's when you start the swing over your back to add in all that power. And then you start to put in that arm pull 
to finish everything. So you end up in a powerful position. Legs have put their entire drive into the machine. Your back's done its swing and your arms have pulled in. All of the power has efficiently gone into the machine. And then to recover to the front of the stroke, the handle goes away, that triggers your forward tilt back over your hips. You are then in that primed posture already. Everything's in the right position. You just bend those knees and then you roll into the front of the machine, ready to start again, okay? Because if I get into the back of the machine and I tug on the foot straps, look what happens. My knees come up, my posture is now back into that tailbone underneath me and I have to throw the handle over my knees and I'm in this compromised position where my back is already leaning backwards as we have seen in the last of those videos from Mark, okay? So, powerful, drive that power through, handle away, rock forwards into the front rather than tucking and then missing the leg drive and then only connecting here and having to pull in with the handle to a finish. So, all Mark needs to do is push his legs into the machine with the same power he's currently using, but to do it with his back in a forwards tilt. This lets his leg drive get into the machine instead of wasting it. And with his back connected to the machine, that swing from forwards to backwards will add in power. As long as he keeps his arms connected and straight through this process, in order to maintain just the 145 splits he rode this 1K at, that arm pull won't need to be as huge as the legs and back have played their fair share. Once he's used to doing this, he'll find out that his body has a lot more to give. Now, this tweak to his technique isn't about trying to turn Mark into a rower. It's about trying to increase his capacity for the rest of the race. Coming off the rower in such a fatigued state means the next run section suffers, and this fatigue will trickle through into the rest of the workouts too. But if Mark could be more efficient on the rower, Still row the same 331k, but feel less fatigued at the end, he'll have more capacity to power through the next 1k run and the rest of the workouts to come. Right, I'm done. Do make sure to check out Mark's channel. He's a very good watch, a great guy, and I really appreciate the opportunity to take a look at his technique. If you're looking for more technique tips, training plans, and workout ideas, all with some motivating waffle, have a look around my Row Along channel where they are all here for you for free. Take care, be well, bye-bye.